Hello, everyone. My name is Melody. I just want to say as a post-abortive woman, having you all here, each and every one of you, really does my heart good. So thank you so much. And it is my hope and prayer that uh, Canada will see abortion be abolished this year in Canada. So here's my story. In 1973, I had a second term abortion at Toronto General Hospital. I was just 16 and my baby was around 14 weeks gestation. While living away from my family after our home had just burned down, I became pregnant as a result of being sexually violated by a young man. At the time, I was a sheltered, artistic, sensitive 15-year-old who played with dolls just two years prior. I was a virgin and planned on waiting until marriage, but was raped on my first date. I, naturally, I was devastated when I found out that I was pregnant. My friend and I made our way down to a Cabbage Town clinic. It wasn't like it is now where you could just find out and go to the dollar store and, and get uh, something to find out. We had to go down to Toronto, and I was. Um, they, did, they did recommend an abortion, and I believe they were ferrying women across the border at that time for abortions in Detroit. So I took the paper home and gave it to my parents that I, they recommended an abortion. I was pregnant, and we thought because doctors did abortions and OHIP covered it, it must be okay. But we soon realized that we had killed an innocent human being, our family member. Once I went to the hospital, the doctor inserted a laminara in me to widen my cervix for the very invasive abortion scheduled 24 hours later. After the abortion, when I woke from the general anesthetic, a nurse yanked yards of bloody packing from me. I was sent home and never told anyone about my horrible, shameful, dirty secret. I felt wrecked, no longer a nice girl, totally embarrassing. My milk came in, no one told me that would happen, and I cried a lot. Twelve years later, after miscarrying a wanted baby, the horrific reality of the abortion hit me. You murdered your baby, and you're going to hell. So, I mean, I was just totally mentally and emotionally broken. It was... It, it was just horrible. I, I was suicidal. I had to quit my job and move home. It was then I found peace through becoming born again and through faith in Jesus. Yeah, amen. <laughs> However, I su still suffered much pent-up trauma over three decades, extreme sadness, hospitalized depressions, relational problems, and a nightmare of waking up in a hospital covered in my baby's blood like what just happened. My greatest healing comes from People like you, for sure. Supportive and caring believers in my life and the sisterly, post-abortive, lifelong bonds of love that we share. We most definitely are that voice for our voiceless, pre-born children, past, present, and future. I'm so thankful for all pro-lifers, salvation in Christ, the joy and strength and, and hope found in him, and especially for my wonderful husband, two beautiful children that have been with me through all the ups and downs of life. Seldom a day goes by that I don't reflect on this dark, dehumanizing, degrading act called abortion that savagely killed my child, Abigail Rose, inside my young body, a child killed inside of a child. For me, the murder of my child has always been the trauma of my life, never the crime of rape, or non-consensual sex. Yes, there are two victims in an abortion. 300 children are killed by abortion each day in Canada, as most of you know. The shock waves continue still. The burden I carry for the plight of our preborn babies and women and men that are hurt by abortion just doesn't let up. It is my prayer again that abortion will be abolished in North America through hearts and minds changed by exposing 
this most horrific injustice against humanity. And that is why I am silent no more. Thank you.